and welcome back. Uh, this is Sean for Last Red D&D, &D, and today we are getting ready for Curse of Strahd to start tomorrow with Session Zero. So, one key factor we're still missing is our landing page. So, I'm going to go ahead and throw that together real quick, and then we're going to work on it a little bit more uh, using Monk's Active Tiles to see what we can do to kind of make it more interactive. So. Let's go ahead and let's create our new scene on Foundry. So, uh, new scene, I'm not going to add it to any folders because, well, it doesn't belong in a folder. So, we're going to just go ahead and call it what it is, landing page. And here we go. Background image. Now, I want to go ahead and have it in my Cursor Strahd of Scenes folders. But currently, I do not have it in here. So I'm going to pull up from um, my chaotic organization. So here we go. Landing page. Select that file. And this one, oh, block view. Vertical fit. And let's see what we get here. Should move quite nicely. Alright, let's see what we got here. Alright. Oh, looks like I still need to play around with the tavern music. Let's fix this real quick so we don't get it blasting in our ears, huh? Alright. Planker's Cove looks up good. Red Fox Tavern needs updated. We'll start right around there. And the Cozy Squirrel. Crazy Squirrel. I like it already. There we go. So. Um, huh. Interesting. So it was supposed to make it so that it was a vertical fit on initialization. Save changes. Alright, well. Let's see what we can do. There's quite a bit that we need done. So we want a background color. There we go. Very nice. Um, I wonder, did lock view change for me as the DM? Hopefully it's not as much of an issue as yesterday's issue was. Alright. Well, I should have the view box. Let's see here. Grid, um, pretty straightforward and simple. Gridless. Distance, zero. Units, blank. Um, so, lighting, uh, no token vision, no fog. Oh, we're not worried about levels. So, wall height can go away. Uh, not worried about darkness control. Alright. And no fog war. Okay. Grid distance must be a positive number. And of course I do that and it's like gonna undo everything I did. We'll leave that alone. We're gonna go gridless. Like we said. Lighting. Yeah, it just undid all the things I did. Oh. There we go. Because loading in, I wanted to have this view. But it's not doing that. Which is really annoying. Now, actually, I'm going to do something. Um, I've got this land page set up somewhere else uh, on my previous Curses World, Curses Strahd World. And so, let's. I'm going to pull up my regular foundry off my desktop and we'll go ahead and work off of that. So, let's go ahead and split into the two screen view. That way we can see what we got. 
Curse Draw and Launch. Ah, that's not the one I wanted. I've never been able to get Return to Setup to work properly from the uh, login screen. So, we're gonna hop on over. Let's see here. Oh, no, this is the one we're working off. So we need to pop on over to my original Curse of Star World. Launch World. Migrate. Yep. So yeah, that world was solely on version 9. I did upgrade partway through the campaign from version 8.9 to version 9. And it was a good move. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping version 10 is going to continue to show that path of progression. Okay, here we go. Um, hopefully... Oh boy. This should be... Uh, I hate that part. I can't remember how to fix that. Let's see here. I know I have to do something in the folders, so. Um, in that case, let's just go ahead and just keep working on it here. And I'll get it figured out. This is actually a pretty easy fix. Now let's do this. Because I'm sure I'm not the only person who overcomes across this. Let's go ahead and go into the two screen view again. Um, so, in Windows you're going to file Explorer, you're going to pull up Foundry VTT, the folder you've got it in. Um, quick and easy way to do that um, is if you right, if you have your Foundry open and you right click and it, it'll open asking what um, uh, what you want to go to. So like, let's open it just so I can pull it up. Alright, if I right click, quick and easy, browse user data. There you go, you're at the folder you need. Alright. Okay. Close Foundry if you have it running. Okay. Click into the config file. Or folder, yeah, folder, and then the admin file. Delete the admin file. Uh, mm, that's not working. Or that's not going to do it because there is no. Yeah, um... Alright, so that wasn't it. Oh, looks like they made it pretty simple. So, um... This was it. Reset user passwords. <laughs> Update world. Lunch. Alright, last word king would have been the admin. Alright, here we go. Now, I'm only really looking for the landing page. So, this is going to be quick. 
because Gonna have to fix the background image, I'm sure. Configuration. Let's see, it was going to a folder that no longer exists. Oh, oh. All right, so we got scenes. Down to my page. Save changes. All right. Walls. All right. Let's refresh it and see what we get. So I'm glad they made resetting the passwords for logging into a world much easier to reset. Let's go ahead and let's jump back into the scene. I'm just going to make it active. So if we have to refresh, all right, get our, let's find out what this error code is. issues with modules again tonight. This is not good. Um, well, let's just do this then. We're going to delete it. Now we're creating a new landing page. One step forward, two steps back, right? I'm so confused right now. take a look at the scene on local forge or local foundry all right we're going to delete those tokens off the screen yeah we're going to configure no we wanna, let's just look at the walls walls look right and the only reason the walls are there is to affect the lighting which we'll see right here um, there's quite a bit of it going on Let's go ahead and, I mean, to me, this looks correct. So we should be able to export the data, save it. Yes, I want to replace it. We're going to ignore this. We're not going to, we're going to import data. Choose file from here. Now, what modules do I have currently? Nothing. So this is base uh, foundry version 10.290. So I should be able to use this exported scene with no issue. <sighs> All right, let's just do this manually. Try a refresh. But right now, I'm not too hopeful as much as I would love to be. So, oh boy. Yep. All 
Alright, I wish that D&D Beyond Importer would just stop bugging me, because I already updated it. Okay, I updated it, but I didn't update. Okay, cool. Well, let's do this. Let's find the culprit again. I, I hate doing this. But let's get started. Um, and just because it's we're doing this whole process yet again, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and have the music playing on my side uh, instead of through Foundry. So I'm going to go music, I'm going to stop it, and then I'll pull up Ivan's on my end. So, no modules active, world, the scene loads up. Does the issue persist? No. So let's start loading in modules. Like, I, I chose these modules for specific tasks, and so it's frustrating that they don't work. Really looking forward to Curse of Strahd. It has been one of my favorite modules or campaigns to run. All right, so right off the bat, first group of modules, and we have something in here from raise my hand all the way down to Jack's animated spell effects. So. Great. <sighs> All right, issue still persists between raise my hand and fix panel wow alright well I guess it's a good thing I picked up found, find, your, find the culprit because <laughs> it's becoming one of the most used modules at this rate but this is all prep once we get going the MIDI automatically surpasses it with how much it does all right, so it's not those ones. It's not between raised and cleaner sheet title bar. So let's see what it is. No, I thought, well, at this point, the, the log's already <laughs> been rewritten with so many new codes. Uh, issue persist. No, it does not. See, every time we restart it, welcome back to the forge and there's yeah, no way to look at the previous, so no need to keep that going. Oh, oh no, it's something between with D Freds. So it's either the chat pins, the convenient effects, droppables, or effects panel. I'm betting you it's the effects panel because I thought I remember seeing something about it. I thought it was the... Did we click no last time? I think we messed up. <laughs> We're gonna have to do it again. Dang it. Um, but I'm gonna pull up... Uh, because I, I seriously do think it's the effects panel. So I'm pulling it up so I can look at the um, runbook. Oh, 
okay, I'm not too, or the, uh, the readme file, I'm not too worried about this module. Uh, let's go back into the modules, the find the culprit, um, I wish there was a quick and easy way to do select all, because I, I, we've already narrowed it down. Um, I'm just going to leave DF alone. Every, I want to test all those. Because the rest of this we think we're good. I mean, we could also, let's pull up the log. And there's always something about curvy walls for some reason. Scene enhancements. All right, here we go. DF templates. Oh, that wasn't part of them. Huh. And yeah, I've only got a few modules. There's only 134 active. <laughs> uh, and I have more available or more downloaded. Um, it, just, it gets kind of crazy how many modules there are and how some of them begin to rely on others and so then you end up with so many. Okay, let's see how this goes. And we can go ahead and jump back into this one screen view. That way it's a more clear image of what we're doing. Oh, so, things that I need to get done for tomorrow night's D&D session, session zero. I am so excited for this. Um, and this is actually the last page on my notepad. So that is... Alright, so... We enabled all those modules except for the DF ones, and it works. So now we're going to see what we got. Uh, it does look like there is a module issue for some reason with Chord Foundry. So let's see here. I mean, like, again, it's showing there's errors with modules. Um, Primarily, we're seeing TF curvy walls, okay. Um, force client, lib wrapper, scene enhancement, curvy walls. Um, Interesting. Um, let's go ahead. Does your issue persist? No, it doesn't persist. Man, can you imagine doing this manually? <laughs> All right, issue persists, yes. So it's convenient fix, chat pins, or template enhancements. Now I'm starting to think, all right, so it's not the effects panel, okay. Well, all right, so chat pins and convenient effects. Let's see what we got for those. And then the other one was template enhancements um, that's a nice to have not a need to have uh, 
All right, it's either template or chat pins. So template, chat pins, convenient effect. Oh, thank goodness. Convenient effects is actually a big workhorse that works well with MIDI, where it automatically applies these uh, effects for you, kind of like Cube does, but it also, all right. <sighs> Looks like it's template enhancements, at least. to do that so let's go ahead and manage modules um, if you look at the uh, dragon flag and uh, template effects so DF template effects it has some very nice things that it does but I mean, if it's not working, it's not working. It's simple as that. So. All right. Template effects, goodbye. If I can find you. So, let's re reload the world one more time. And hopefully we've got our landing page we can work with. Um, but yeah, so for tomorrow night, I need to go ahead and create, um, uh, like, uh, player, so I need player, te uh, player name tags. What that will result in is, uh, character name tags. And then, in turn, class name tags. Class slash level. Okay. And there we go, we have our landing page now. Uh, why does it show a measuring tool and in purple for that matter let's see here well anyways let's just go ahead and work on the scene uh, configure uh, regenerate thumbnail there we go lock view vertical fit save changes When I load into the scene, what do I see? What's interesting is like, I'm looking at my foundry world and I'm seeing that measurement there too. Oh, I bet, yep, it's a template. Yep, delete those. Ah, there we go. That's why I was saying it. So, what happened? Because, like, this is not fitting correct. That's, that's kind of annoying for me. Now, this would be a great map if, uh, if it wouldn't crash it for uh, the rain to be falling and to have certain sections blocked off so the rain didn't affect it. That's not going to be the case. Uh, the rain wants to affect everything. So uh, we've got our lighting. Everything's looking good. Um, yeah, 
his eye is not very strong, but there's some animation going on there, but um, kind of hard to tell. So this is what the load in screen should automatically zoom into. Um, so. Let's go right there. And we'll s set the view. Oh, okay. So that, if I had players or whatnot and I hit click that, then they would see, or they would be moved to the settings I'm on right now. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and let's work on what do we need for the player character or the players to click on one is their characters why am i writing this down when i could just write it down here so we're gonna go and we're gonna do text characters character oh and we've got some fun fonts now uh, let's make it that. Let's go ahead and put it up to 96. And let's do... Let's do this red from the Penda on Strahd's uh, cape. And ta-da! It disappeared. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess we're just going to type it out. First off, text, character. I am Velvel English and 96. We can go ahead and do one sec. All right. That is nice and big. Now, I don't want to go too far to the left, and I don't know where I want to put it. Along the bottom could be good. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to rotate that. But I don't want to go too low either. So we'll go there. And actually, what we could do works right <sighs> nope it's not gonna let me do it okay I was thinking maybe we can just make be one text box and have spaces in between and whatnot but no that's not gonna be it all right I remember that was AD we're gonna go oh copy text fellish So, now when we do a text, are you, what? What is happening here? Uh, Z index, let's put, 25 cuz if this disappears again I'm going to be so confused all right so z index I need to change that apparently all right because I think the main level is 20 on a scene yep foreground 20. That's why. Alright, well, we got 
our new text. We're going to put, um, what should we put here? Well, I'm going to go ahead and I know it was a huge uh, thing beginning of this year uh, to have the cool landing pages. Um, and it was just all over. Um, and so let's go ahead and see what we can pull up. I know Reddit was huge with this. So the little gimmicks, so they're using uh, Mux Active Tile Triggers to make this work. Alright, let's see here. actually finding too much right now. <sighs> Alright. Aside from their characters, I'm not f aware of what else, but I mean, we can have the map. Let's go with that. Um, hmm. What I wish I could do instead of having it centered. Um, have it line up. So what I'm gonna do? Oh gosh, I wish that would just move easily. All right, position um, x coordinate. I like it. Three thirty-six. We're gonna drop this down. Drop it down 300. See what that looks like. That's too much. So, there we go. That's simple enough. Now, uh, nope. We'll have to draw a t uh, tile over it. Alright. What else? And actually, I think, ah, there we go, lines, okay, yeah, I don't want the lines visible, so, except for, alright, we got the characters, we got a map, what else would they come across? They're going to come across a reading. So let's go ahead and create um, that as well. And so update. Put that there. Now, what I should. 
should do is all right position so we went from 1298 to 445 so calculator time I am very OCD I like to have everything just right so um, 1445 minus 1298 that's gonna be 147 and then we're gonna put that on top of the 145 so that means this one should be starting at 1592. That way they're equally spaced out. Now what I am going to end up doing is I'll also turn this one invisible, making it so that the, uh, act, well, I'm going to make it so the active tile isn't eligible until the this is visible. Let's keep going. What else do they have that's going to happen in the lands of Barovia? Um, they're not really going to be doing journals as I have it set up on the Discord server. That way, if I'm doing maintenance or, heaven forbid, they're typing stuff and I do a world, uh, module or a world reset because that'll just wipe out whatever they had just been working on and if it had been the whole session then they can kiss their notes goodbye i've had that happen before i so that's why i don't recommend players keeping their journals within foundry i have no issues with them keeping a journal in uh, discord or um, anywhere else but i discourage having it happen on foundry now, I am using the Forge, so it's always accessible, um, but yeah. Now, let's see here. We got characters, we got maps, we got a reading. Let, oh, let's see what else we got. close oh interesting I didn't change the Z index on that and it's still there hmm. interesting um, text let's I don't know. Um, there's nothing I really know that they would need. Because, like, I'm looking at some of these uh, land foundry landing pages, and, um, like, they really look nice and cool. But, um, not really seeing what I need or any ideas to work off of because like one person they've got all the characters um, one person's got all these different things um, but it's in a different language um, I'm going to assume characters, general, I don't know what that would be, uh, journals, NPCs, maps. Um, yeah, we can create an NPC one. So we're going to go NPCs. We'll update that. There we go. Um, just means I have to update it. Now I'm going to swap it with map because that one's going to be visible right off the bat the map not so much so let's see here 
and I'm swapping these two. So, 1740. Alright, update, update. There we go. Just swap them. Um, I think that's it, really. So we're going to make those invisible. We're going to lock these all down. Oh, we do have one more thing. We need to change those lines to be uh, uh, no longer visible. Especially now that I really don't need the lines, since we know the uh, locations. And there we go. Now, I can see that if I was to invite another player to join, um, they would not be able to see. So let's actually go ahead and create an invitation link. Invitation URL is copied. I'm going to go ahead and, oh, well, we've got the camera. So let's go ahead and um, let's launch that. So we'll hop back over to this dual screen view where we can see what I see and we'll see what the players would be able to see. And so when they when it logs in, it should be vertical fit for the log view. And also I should be able to only see character and NPCs here on the right. Awesome. And it loaded incorrectly with the lock view. I am very happy so far. Now, the only thing we need to fix is we need to make it so we can uh, click on these. Now, I do see one more thing I don't like, and that is I can see my mouse. Since this is a DM controlled um, mouse, I don't want that visible. So we're gonna do user management. That's gonna kick me out. Uh, Blackbird is not gonna be a player. Promote to trusted player. Yeah, lost connection. All right, so that's kicking them out so they can reconnect as a trusted player. Reason being, I have all my players have uh, the same settings. The trusted player is just my camera. The reason why I don't go with assistant GM is because then it'll see the creatures. And so I need it to be a player view. So I'm back in. It's still wanting me to update to 12, which I have. It just hasn't updated the world. Let's go ahead and go into configure settings because we can still, no, we cannot, yep, we do still see the mouse. We can see it over here on the left down here. We're going to go open mission, permission configuration. Uh, mouse cursor, Some if it gets there somehow, we don't want that either. Save configuration. All right, now, perfect. If I refresh my page, should not see that mouse anymore. I'll also want to go in and change the nickname of this um, player account to camera. That way, um, my players know that it is uh, working. good. Let's get the tiles now, shall we? Alright, so we're going to go with characters. Our character. Create new tile. This tile is blank, it doesn't do anything, but here's the thing. We're gonna lock it in. I 
don't want manually. So now we can do this triggers. We're going to go into actions. This tile. Uh, open actor sheet. Now here's the problem. I don't have their character sheets just yet. But I'm going to go ahead and create a folder. PCs. Oh. Alright, perfect. And then I don't need it because it says player tokens. And this will work for everyone. Update. Update. Now, let's go ahead. Um, oh, wait. That should work for the. Player tokens should work for. Oh, no. Uh, nope. I don't want it entered. I want it clicked. Update. Huh. That's not working. Guess we'll go ahead and I'm gonna pull this up here and see what other people did. Because why well, recreate the wheel, right? It's active, controlled by anyone. When they click on it, actions, open character sheet. Because right now the camera has uh, permission to the party actor sheet. And so they should be able to click right here on character. Now I wonder, is it because it's not visible? No. Is it because it's locked? No. Is it because, no. What is the, what is the reason this is not working? So like, Let's go ahead and edit, I guess. Use this action. Let's just, let's update it so it triggers party. No. All right, well, we're gonna lock it and turn it invisible. All right.
let's I guess we're just gonna do a quick search on YouTube because YouTube knows all and we're gonna go foundry VTT uh, landing page Um, there's a few options here. Uh, I'm going to start off with the creator I know the most. And so I'm going to follow theirs. So we're following Bailey Wiki's module tutorial. I do have two others queued up. Um, I have looked through this before, so it's not... I, I, I thought I had it down, but obviously not. So we're going to pause the music. We're going to see what Bailey Wiki has to say. And kind of go step by step, following along. So intro. Uh, hey everyone, this uh, is S. Welcome to the Baby Wiki, where we teach everyday DMs how to create truly amazing experiences for their players by combining art and technology. We also make modular systems and scenes that you can use without any setup. If you're a DM who likes to wow your players and you're using platforms like Foundry VTT and I will say it's pretty cool how they have the rotating background. Um, not necessarily something I want to do, but I think it's cool. And Dungeon Draft, then you're in the right place. Today we're talking landing pages. They're a great way to keep information at your players' fingertips and also set the tone for your next session. Nothing quite sets the stage for a romp through the Nine Hells like a fiery opening scene and dark art. Our latest release of the BaileyWiki landing pages module is aimed at helping you do that as quickly and efficiently as possible without any of the usual headaches. Let's dive right in. First, let's recap our first release. We first introduced landing pages with a large variety of props and decor for setting up a table or similar scene. There's a whole lot of options in there that you can select to clutter things wherever you like. You can also get creative and use these assets for more than just landing pages. These same art pieces work beautifully for setting up a formal shop that your players can interact with without you having to actually micromanage the scene. If you want to know where all these tiles are at, you can take a look at our previous release inventory page. In it, you'll find the locations for everything and brief descriptions of all of the different prefabs available with some smart functionality built in. These are meant for layering on top of any artwork that you already have. And you can find these prefabs inside of the BaileyWiki landing page prefabs compendium. They're under the general UI pieces and you bring them in and act in our latest release, the landing pages really come into their own. Here is our simple preset version, which uses Monk's active tile triggers to teleport between the different scenes in the landing page setup. This is great for a lot of players who are keeping things simple. The complex version keeps everything to one scene, which is nice if you don't want people running around. Yep, that's what I'm Instead, looking for. All of the elements hide and activate when you click on their corresponding menu items. Oh. Note that if you have multiple players, all of these things turn on and off for everyone. Okay. Um, because like the NPCs, that's just, I want it to just open a journal and I just want it to open for that player. Uh, same thing with the reading because that'll be a separate uh, journal. Now the map, that one is going to be a, uh,
I think I can put that, yeah, I can put the map in a journal for them as well. And so, yeah, we'll just make those three journals. And then the characters, I just need their character sheets to come up. The real innovation here is this little tile up in the top right corner. When we click on it, we open up a customization menu. This controls all of the aesthetics for our scene. Oh, well that'd be nice. And adjust the theme for the entire scene using one of six presets, such as changing it to this frost, which changes the color of virtually every UI element and adjusts the weather. We can also go through and customize individual elements, such as the frame images. And if we don't like it, we can go back to the previous one. There's further customization in the colors, where we can again choose from our presets so that we can mix and match, or we can use a custom item. Okay, so uh, I took a look at his module that he's talking about, the uh, Bailey Wiki landing pages. Um, it is a module that is uh, through his Patreon, so there is that. this color picker may look different depending upon the browser that you're using. This allows you to have maximum flexibility with these assets. The dialogue system allows you to greatly customize all of the base landing page designs without having to know how Monk's active tile triggers works or going through each individual action to set up a new First impressions are everything, and this includes your online Dungeons & Dragons games. But the first thing your player sees and interacts with sets the tone for everything that comes after. This is where a landing page... Sorry, I forgot I had myself on mute. Um, so, looking at Bailiwiki stuff, um, it is a pay-to-play, or pay-for module through Patreon. Which means... You, you get it for the month. Um, unless you continue to pay and so that's not something I'm necessarily looking for especially since really I just need a little oomph to get started so I know there's other people that do get or do set it up with active tile effects uh, villainous uh, foundry here uh, I've s followed their content before I do like what they put out uh, let's see what they've got which comes in for your virtual tabletop a landing page is the scene where your players first come in on and they join the game. In my opinion, a landing page is where you will spend most of your time, so having it look nice and, very important, functional, paramount. Foundry VTT allows you to do some amazing things with landing pages. These are just a few examples of what you can do. You're able to do amazing things to the tone of your campaign with just one page. The description okay, so... The going watching through that actually gave me some good ideas of things we can do. Um, so one thing is like the map. Um, we're not doing a table scene like this where that would be great for it. So we're going to have to pass on that. Um, but like doing a journal click. All right, here we go. So characters, um, as I said with journals, we're not doing those. Um, but we can use, um, I, I've got the two journals that I expect them to be using, uh, which is NPCs and readings. And I'm going to make sure that the NPCs, they can edit the readings. Um, for the most part, they should be able to edit. And then the map um, is just a view, view only. Actually, that kind of lines up perfectly with theirs because, you know, characters, we got that. We got the journal, uh, we got for uh, NPCs and readings, and words of the oracle, that, that's kind of like readings. And then the world map is what we, we also have as a map.
all right this one looks really cool um so you use your gift zord that is really awesome um i see here it's got the player tokens in a box i really do not like that look personally um now um player characters journals npc list world map again perfect all right so we're on track with what everyone else is doing i like that um journal maparium uh don't know what yeah they there must be running some oh drakenheim okay cool uh dante's infernal uh lost ones <laughs> oh, uh lore maps uh personnel so probably your current characters uh, that's probably your current character sheet um yeah i don't know what dramatis personality uh, now this is really cool. Um, I don't know quite how I would work with this. I mean, having your own individual character cards that is, that's really cool. I like it. Having a chapter one like this that would be interesting. I don't know what I would necessarily put in it, especially since that is a long wall of text. Um, but I mean, eventually being able to yeah, that's that's all cool stuff. All right. Description below, you'll find the assets, base.png, and the Photoshop file for the landing page we will be using today. What we will be setting up is a pretty basic landing page that will do the following things for you. Clicking a player's portrait will bring up their character sheet. Clicking the small map changes the scene to a travel map. Clicking the left page of the journal brings up a quest log, and clicking the right page brings up a community journal that your players can leave notes in. And finally, clicking the coin bag will open a bag of holding. I feel like these things are all you really need from your landing page. You can certainly do more than just these things with the landing page, but it's always good to have a good baseline to start from. So before we get started, if you like my content and want to see more, make sure to subscribe. Only like 10% of you are actually subscribed. And I'm grateful for every single one of you guys. The modules we'll be using today are Monk's Active Tile Triggers, Monk's Enhanced Journals, and Forian's Quest Log. These will all be linked in the description down below. So our first step is to customize the base file for your campaign. I'm not going to really go over this, it's pretty simple image editing in the image editor of your choice. Customizing, I mean of course, using your party's portraits in your own map. Now with the image editing done, bring it in as a background into your scene. Here we'll be using Monk's active tile triggers to make everything clickable 
and refer you to the correct place. Our first goal is to make our character portraits bring up the correct character sheet when they click on them. First thing we do is make a new tile over the portrait. Then we will use a transfer image for the tile, which can also be found in the description below. Now once that is set up, we go to the triggers tab. Okay, so I guess we're going to go ahead and I will download those. Um, what I'm really looking for, though, is that transparent. Um, so. So, we're going to keep going. Here, the setting we want is to change the win from on enter to your choice of on click or on double click, and then check the hover over pointer checkbox. Okay, so let's go back here because that transparent icon PNG file, I wasn't able to find it, but what I can do is I can make one. Uh, and it's super simple. I'm going to go into a paint editing software. I'm going to highlight everything, delete it all, file, save as, and we'll save it as transparent. Save. Okay. Now, let's go ahead, let's go back to the tile, and basic image. Um, this is actually something I'm going to have not be in. All right. Um, it's not upload. It's not in modules. Wow. Um, I, I guess I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call it assets. And we're going to go ahead and um, call this one tiles. Because what I plan on doing later on is I plan on um, bringing in a uh, uh, tokens. So, and I got them, I've got too many of them, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> All right, so let's choose our file, let's bring it over. There we go. There we go. We're going to select the file. There we go. Now, let's hop over into landing page. It might uh, still unable to click it. All right, cool. Well, let's go ahead and keep watching and see what they do. Here, the setting we want is to change the win from on enter to your choice of on click or on double click, and then check the hover over pointer checkbox. Alright. So, triggers set up. It's active. Allow all tokens. Controlled by anyone on click you're able to see that okay good um, yeah I yeah, that's the only one I'm okay Next, we'll want to go oh, hover over pointer we're gonna update the tile and all right at this point what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch from the two screen to a three screen and yes, I've got four screens. So that makes things a little different. So uh, down here at the bottom, we have the player view. And so we'll see what we got from there. Over to actions and add only one action here. This action being the very simple open an actor sheet. 
All right, so there's one for triggering player. Let's figure out. So actions, open act. Let's make sure. Okay. All right, let's see what they do. Now you want to select entity to be the character sheet of the portrait, and you want to only show to the triggering player. Okay. Th this is all set up correctly. So this far. Makes it so the person clicking on the pal is only opening the character sheet and it's not showing to everyone else. Now, just copy and paste this over the remaining portrait, changing what entity it is to match the player. With the portraits done, it is now time to go over to our map. Okay, so why is this Wait. Okay. I wonder if it's because we took away the actor sheet, so, or the uh, actors. So let's go through and, uh, I know it's something to do with the player user interface. Hide player UI. There we go. Let's see here. Um. So let's go into settings here. Hide player UI. Now we're gonna have to refresh. All right, see what that does. And let's see what they do from here. Here, we'll be having the map switch out to a larger title map when you click on it. First. Okay, so. Um, I think what we want to do is let's go ahead and create our journals. So I'm going to create a folder, PC, um, PC accessible. And we're going to name the first one NPCs. All right, cool. Close that. We're going to name the next one Quests. Great. Close that. We're going to name the next one card reading. Now, I wish it would be easy to say um, what all players get. Actually, yeah, it is. NPCs. Um, everybody owns it. That's fine. Card reading. Everyone observes it. Um, actually, we'll go ahead. We'll just make everyone an owner and quests owners now actually because of they don't have the card reading yet nobody has ownership but once they do then we'll do that and then we'll also create one for maps or the the map because there's only one map all right let's do that all right set up a scene with your map as the background then set up the grid to your liking and make sure to change the grid scale to fit whatever scale you currently are using for it. Now, follow the previous steps of the previous tile, and instead of using the open and actor sheet action, use the change scene action. Set the scene to be your previously made travel map scene. Make sure that- All right, so, like I said, we got, now we got our, we can pull up the parties with the camera. But when I click on ca character, it's not pulling it up. Man, this is kind of frustrating. Current actor. Let's see if that works. Uh, 
do I need to refresh my page? Let's see if that works. Because now when I hover over, you, you can see the mouse changes. Um, so, man, I was like, I was really excited. I thought we were gonna have an easier time with this. Dang. Okay. Let's. All right. Because that one's not working, let's just try. Let's do this. Delete that. Yes, I want to delete that tile. Place the tile. Let's try tile browser. Transparent. And we'll just get that lined up. There we go. Now, let's go with triggers. And we're just going to do this a little more of a manual process. So Since we're just talking and working through this right now, let's just stick with this. Um, in fact, let's hop back over to here so we have a better view. So, all tokens have access. We need the hover over pointer. Well, don't need, but want. Uh, we're not clicking, we're, or not entering, we're clicking because nobody's moving on the scene. Controlled by anyone. Now, the action is open character sheet. Select entity, no. Use tokens within triggering tile, no. Use player tokens. Or, all right, so we're gonna do that. And we're gonna do everyone, or triggering player. Update tile. Now, that that is not working. So I think what I'm going to do then is I am going to see what we got for monks active tiles because. That's my best guess, is something's going on there. And so I want to see. All right. Okay, so is a wiki created by an individual. Let's see what we got here. Okay, here we go. There is a little bit of a section for open an actor sheet. This is what we're looking for. So it's supposed to open the selected actor sheet. This action does not check for permissions. Or this action does check for permissions. So none, they can't open the sheet. Um, Limit, limited opens the sheet's background. Okay, that might be that might be an interesting one. Uh, observer opens the full sheet, unable to edit, and then owner full permissions. Uh, select entity. So let's just open this up. All right. So action open. Uh, 
we know about permissions. Those are pretty straightforward and simple. Um, sorry, Ivan, not too much of a fan of the Westerns. Um, let's go ahead. All right, so we, we don't want a um, we don't want a specific one for the character to or character, but I mean it's not working at all right now. So let's just start with party update update tile, um, and let's see if that works. No, it doesn't. Um, yeah, this has been. <laughs> I wish I wish this was so much easier and it would just go so smoothly. So, um, so select entity, uh, use this to target a specific entity, uh, use triggering token, player tokens will, all right, so the player token option will open the sheet of the actor the current player is currently set as in the player configuration window. Oh, perfect. That's exactly what we want. So. Um, player tokens, trigger player. Update, update. Let's go back to seeing what um, Villainous has here. The activate checkbox is actually unchecked. Okay, so we need to go back to... Oh, that was a little bit far. Still not. Th All right, here we go. The image editing is done. Bring it in as a background into your scene. Here, we'll be using Monk's active tile triggers to make everything clickable and refer you to the correct place. Our first goal is to make our character portraits bring up the correct character sheet when they click on them. First thing we do is make a new tile over the portrait. Then we will use a transfer image for the tile, which can also be found in the description below. Yep. Now, once that is set up, we go to the triggers tab. Here, the setting we want is to change the win from on enter to your choice of on click or on double click. And then. The nice thing is, I can actually make it so it's both of those. Uh, since this is a newer version of. Uh, monks. Check the hover over pointer. One thing. Oh. Allow when paused. That's probably why. Update. Now, let's head over and let's take a look at uh, the player view. That's exactly what the problem was. Okay, sweet. So, let's go ahead and let us see what else we can do. Sorry about that bump in music. Uh, just increase the volume just a touch and uh, the mouse wheel went a little crazy. So, now we got character. Because w when the world is opened by a player and it's active, the world is always on pause until the GM uh, changes that. So, let's go ahead and now that we've got this going, let's keep it going. So, NPCs. Now, trigger, it's going to be the same thing. Click, double click, either one works. And we are going to go into the action. Now, we're going to open a journal. And we are going to go, and we are going to select NPCs. There is no page, and there is no subsection. Check permission? No, because they're fine. Actually, let's go ahead and just do that. Because what I can do is, let's go ahead and copy that. And we're going to do the exact same thing. But now we're going to do Quests. Update. Update. Now, we've got 
Oh, no, I want to highlight. Well, let's move those. We're going to unlock that and delete it. And then we're going to move these back to where they should be. There we go. And we can now lock those. Alright. Now. Lock that. Here's the issue I have. I'm going to change this one to inactive. And we're going to change it to uh, the correct journal, which is the card reading. All right. Update tile. Now. If I go over here, okay, perfect. I do not have the ability to click on it. But if I make this active, now you can see. Perfect. All right, awesome. And we're gonna do the same thing with the map. Sweet, this is coming along nicely. I am excited. Uh, Triggers, uh, update, update. All right, there we go. And there are a little sweet. And now they should be able to add pages. So like session zero quest, create page. And now we can name it how um, and there we go. Now save it, close it, session zero. This is a test to see if you have access to this. Haha. <laughs> um, and then as they create more stuff, and I'm gonna look, this one is one that I'm just like, you guys get full control over this. Uh, that is so cool. I love this, this is gonna be great. NPCs. A again, it's just, hey, name your important uh, NPCs or important characters that you've come across. Uh, write down information about them. What do you need to, kn what do you know about them? Or, and when they kind of put an NPC in there, uh, my plan is to go back through later on and add a picture. So, with all of that said and done and out of the way, uh, we got about 25 minutes left. One thing I really need to do is get a Session Zero quest together. Now, Session Zero quests for me are very straightforward and simple. Uh, we are doing a level 3 uh, start to curse of Strahd because I'm go I'm gonna throw them into the world and say have fun. Uh, I'm gonna give them, well I'm gonna give them a starting location. Uh, right now I'm still trying to decide whether that's going to be um, trying to decide if that's going to be the. Uh, Uh, Vistani Invitation, though I'm kind of leaning away from that and thinking maybe we'll go with the werewolves. Um, and so start them off in a village where there's been issues with wolves. And so kind of lead them in with that. Um, now, one of my players has already made his character, uh, and so we don't have to work through that tomorrow. That is kind of nice. Um, and so, um, 
everything's pretty much ready for them. I'm looking forward to what they've got. Uh, they've got a little token art, just like what I've got here in the bottom right corner um, for their person hopping up and down. They also have a very nice token for on the virtual tabletop that I'm looking forward to. Um, you know what? Actually, they do have their character sheet here. Let's go ahead and let's bring that over. Um, problem being, I don't think I have my D&D Beyond importer configured on here. And considering that requires sensitive information, uh, let's see what we can do. So, D&D Beyond importer core setup. Yep, don't have the cobalt cookie. So, um, that is under application. Nope, not accessibility. Application. Not working. I am logged in over there, so let's refresh it. Try again. Manifest. That's a little nope. Uh, let's go ahead and pull it up on a different thing. Because I work, had it working here yesterday. Application. All right, here we go. So let's find that cobalt. There we go. Success. There we go. Save, save. Now we can import it. Now. Name it one, two, three. Just because it is simple enough to just copy their link. Import it. And here we go. Hi, Meganus. Uh, welcome to my stream. Uh, we are getting our landing page ready for Curse of Strahd tomorrow. Uh, we are importing our first character. Um, hate when that happens. Um, and so, yeah, tomorrow night, first stream of Curse of Strahd. Uh, it has been interesting getting ready. I am looking forward to seeing how this goes. This is a new group. I have not played with any of them before, though one of them does come from uh, the recommendation of one of my other party members from uh, my 15-month-old Curse of Strahd campaign. So I am looking forward to seeing what we got there. All right. I'm going to leave that alone. Oh, frames? Nope, nothing there. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm going to go into my assets if I can, if it ever lets me. Um, because I want to, I've got his token here on the side, and I want to, there we go. I want to just place it straight into the world. Um, I'm going to make a folder 2023 because that's the year we're starting um, because my 2021 group is also going to be using similar the similar world um, and they play on Saturdays that is a private game that I don't stream uh, not yet I might with their permission start streaming it um, but we are almost done with that and so um, we will we will have to see so let's go ahead and uh, yeah, it's interesting. I have a 2020 file for Curse of Strahd that my brother ran for us, or for myself and a few of his friends. Um, and so uh, that was that was a good fun time. Um, stressful um, because we were um, I was expecting it to be more of uh, consistent it was very inconsistent so that was to me it, that was stressful so. all right 
So we got our file. Let's pick up our file. Oh, it's over here. So we got it. I've got a lot of things and a lot of organizational stuff to deal with to get that in here. All right, there we go. We got his token for Valis. We're going to update that. Now, it's not going to stay on the page um, because there we go. And there, there we see the character art very well. Uh, that is perfect. I like it. Uh, the only thing, oh, I'm not seeing it uh, because there's no owner, but let me make him an observer. Okay, let's make him an owner. There we go. So if a token's not on the scene, if a token on the scene is not owned, it will not show up under token, Mike's token bar. That's cool. All right, sweet. I think we're going to be good there. Um, configure ownership. Um, all right, cool. So I have it so that the camera, uh, my second screen, can see all the players. That way, uh, when we're on a battle map and players are moving around, the camera can still see what the players can see. And that translates over. So, very nice. Um, let's go ahead. Uh, tomorrow is going to be session zero. Um, we go over the house rules, the FAQs. Uh, we get, in this case, we're going to have to make characters for two of the players. Um, for the player using Valis. Um, wow, this is... Uh, this has come over quite nicely. I'm looking. F oh, okay, interesting. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what they. Uh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> That's a lot of platinum. So one of my house rules is they get. Yeah, that didn't look right. Uh, they get their starting equipment based off of their class gold. And their class gold is maxed out. And it's by how many levels they have in that class. So in this case, Valis is level 3 cleric. So they get three times the maximum of what the uh, starting class would get for... Um, or the starting gold would be for a cleric. So, hopping over into the rule book, cleric. Um, oh, it's not going to be under cleric. It's going to be under starting equipment, wealth. There we go. Cleric. They get 5d4 times 10. So, 200 gold per level. 600. Um. Holy cow, but um, for some reason it's showing that they have 46 platinum, uh, 20 gold, 21 silver, and 10 copper. Actually, that does line up. Um, it In total, it averages out to 482. That platinum number just throw me, throws me off, though. <laughs> um, and so, like, convert all currency, yes. Boom. So, he's got 48 gold or 48 platinum, 2 gold, and 2 silver. That works fine for me. Um, especially since um, you know, carry weight, which for some reason is not being displayed down here. Let's edit this. Um, no. Containers. Let's see. Tools. There we go. Consumables. I wish that list was alphabetized. Equipment, but 
I, okay, I see now. It's in the order of what Foundry has. And weapons. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now anything that they pick up, and I'm just going to grab an item. Um, let's grab a weapon, armor, chainmail. They have scale mail, so I'm going to drop this in. And it should automatically go into the equipment. There we go. Equipment. So now they don't have it, so I'm removing it. But there we go. Um, they have the option to send it to another player, whatever the item is. Um, I'm sp do they not have? They did not pick up a weapon. Alright, so I'm going to have to confirm that with them. Because it's odd to me that they would not pick up a weapon. So, again, another very good reason to go through uh, Session Zero. Uh, make sure everything looks right, feels right, works right. Because you come across stuff and it's like, hey, you don't have this. <laughs> well, you might need that. So, sweet, sweet, sweet. We've got our lights. Um, let. I don't think these guys are working too strongly. Uh, flickering light. Um. Holy cow. Now we're not going to update it. There we go. Um. Provides vision. Uh. All right, the attenuation is what I want to change on these. So I'm going to max those out, um, update, update. Now that one, let's, let's see what the, oh, whatever is going on with that light is not working for me. Let's change that back to a 0.5, see if that helps it. Because like you can probably just barely see this one, what it was. Um, problem is is its size so we're going to bring it back down to uh, 0.5 here in a bit but let's go ahead and make it a 50 for now that way we can see all right so we got these swirls let's see here uh, vortex now that's going to be i like it i <laughs> uh, wasn't expecting that um contained by walls yep uh, Okay, now let's go ahead and bring it back to a point five and update. Now let's go ahead and there we go. Uh, let's copy this one. Let's get rid of this one. Paste. Now I wish. You know what? Here we go. Let's do this because I don't need the infinity right in the way. That one's just tough. Um, we're gonna, I think we're going to have to go with a point 0.3. Update that. We're going to move this out of the way. And that's probably why we were seeing that. Uh, yeah, that's gonna, that's just going to be the best we get on that. Um, but I definitely like that those eyes really pop. Um, man, 
I, I'm super stoked with how this is turning out for them. Uh, and honestly, that card rating one, I'm almost tempted to like make a card one of the things that they can click on. So, all right. Oh, all right, cool. Um, oh, I forgot how their <laughs> their rolls went. That was crazy. Um, at this point, I think I am ready to head back out onto the found onto the forge. And most people won't need to do this, but because I'm running this game for two groups. I'm having to split this up, or I'm having to clone it. So, um, Curse of Strahd, um, alright, let's go ahead and we're gonna clone this world. Um, and we're going to name this one Chris, Chris Drod 21. Enter the New World's title. Um, Curse of Strahd 21. I get, I, that's just what I'm going to have to go with. Um, I, I'm going to change this once to 23. Save changes. Currently in use. Alright, we're gonna stop the server. Um, I might still. No, I don't have it. Okay, cool. I'm gonna minimize that. I'm gonna close. Oh, I did have the landing page still open. That's why. Alright, we're gonna. Oh, no! <laughs> I launched the game when I meant to. Oh, well. Um, but yeah, we see what we're doing there. So, uh, with that, we are. I'm stoked with what we've got going. Uh, I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, I've been running Curse of Strahd for a while now, um, 15 months, and before that I worked on creating this world in Foundry, and then said, screw it, I'm scrapping this and starting over, <laughs> because I went to DM Andy's artwork, because I love the artwork he's doing. Now, I'm not an idiot, and I didn't just throw it all away into the garbage, I still have it, um, but I'm wanting to move away from using uh, Wizards of the Coast art because um, it's just blah. Um, and especially if you can like go through and it gives a description of the room but it's just barren and so it's like well where's this or where's that especially when you're using a virtual tabletop and you can use that. So um, Let us go ahead and go back to the forge one more time uh, so we can update this. Um, like, I wish it wasn't, <laughs> I wish it wasn't so sensitive, but I mean, it is what it is, right? So, Curse of Strahd, we're going to stop the server. We're going to name it 23. Uh, and we're gonna server stops. Uh, we're gonna favorite the Curse of Strahd games. Okay, Curse of Strahd 23. I see that banner disappeared on me earlier. Um, now the Banished World. I'm I'm hoping to get that game going. Uh, it is a Thursday game. That is supposed to start this Thursday, but with the lack of interest, I'm uh, pushing it back two weeks. That way I can go ahead and work on trying and getting more players to sign up. Uh, it is a homebrew world with a homebrew campaign where uh, there's a lot of political intrigue going on. The uh, White Queen, who has aged quite well, uh, is now without a husband. The king, and as a result, 
uh, many of the Dutch and Duchesses are biting at the bit to see who's going to be the next to rule, as the Queen has not named a successor and is without an heir. So, uh, with that, um, Kirsten Strahd is ready for tomorrow. Uh, still a few things to work out, um, but that is back-end things on, like, OBS and things like that. But I think we're good. Um, I will be online tomorrow night um, around a little before 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so, hey, thanks, Magnus. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited to get another campaign going. So um, have a good night, and hopefully I'll catch you around later.